Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Blender and Octane tutorial. Uh, thanks again for checking out the video series. This is doing a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, it's pretty cool all you guys are interested in Octane for Blender. Alright, so I'm going to show you uh, some mapping tricks. Um, specifically one of my favorite ones. It's called the triplanar mapping. So first I'm going to set up a scene here for you guys. So let's just delete this cube. Oops and add in a uh, UV sphere. I'm going to subdivide it. I just hit uh, control 2. That gives it uh, two subdivision levels. I'll just apply it. And then I'll shade it smooth. Alright, so I'm going to drop in a environment here. And this is also something I'll show you guys. I don't think I showed you this in the last one. Let's go to my usual Canada Montreal. There it goes. Perfect. All right. So this side, I'm going to do my shader editor. And I'm going to hit new. And if you guys hit new and see you got that big universal material, I think I showed you in my last video. But uh, I go to edit preferences and go to octane. And you can actually change your default material type. I use glossy more than I use the universal because I pretty much never use the universal. Um, and you can see it's not smooth, so hit smooth here. That way we get a nice smooth surface. Um, but as far as the HDRI, I wanted to show you guys this. If you want to rotate this HDRI around, um, normally you would think you just grab a rotate transform, put it on transform, and you can rotate one of these and it'll work. Well, it does not. And I think I even tried changing them all at once. Oh, that flipped everything around, didn't it? Hold on, maybe I didn't try this before. Interesting. Still not going the way I want it to. All right, so instead of messing with all that, uh, drop in a full transform. plug it in a transform and under translation X I click and hold shift that way I can move it nice and slow this is the best way I've found just to rotate them and for some reason it doesn't work properly up here so yeah just a little quick tip there on how to rotate an HDRI around all right so I just want that back to zero I usually look like that all right object Okay, so triplanar mapping. Um, normally, when you throw a map on, you, you have to have some sort of projection, like a box or spherical um, or perspective. So it's kind of like an advanced box mapping. So I'm going to drop in this material that I downloaded online. It's just a uh, uh, UV map image. And we'll plug that in here. All right. So it doesn't look bad, mapped fine. So if I go to box projection and I put it there, see how it's mapping from X, Y, Z, but you have the seam in here. All right. So I'm gonna drop in a triplanar texture and it looks crazy, but it's not. So I'm going to plug this map in to the positive X here. I'll expand this. Negative X, positive Y, negative, positive Z, negative Z. Now when you first plug it in, you're going to be like, all right, that doesn't look like anything. Well, if you plug the box into it, it looks the exact same, right? What you need is a triplanar projection and you plug that into its projection. Now see how it started to blur that edge right there? You have this bend angle and you can actually adjust this bend angle and kind of feather in your map. And you're thinking, all right, well, this still looks dumb, but this isn't the best example for it. Uh, a good example would be if we grabbed a, uh, let's see, let's grab a grunge map. Mm. 
Let's grab this one. Let's wiping residue. Look at that. It looks pretty much perfect versus if we still had a box projection. You can still see some harsh lines. It doesn't look bad, but it could look better. So that's not the coolest part. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to plug this into my roughness. And uh, let's make this super shiny. You can make it look metal by changing the index to 1 or changing the index to like 7 or 8. And then coming up here in the diffuse and dropping the color down. It's kind of a fake way to make metal, but it's kind of more of an artistic metal. You can tweak it a little bit more. All right, so we have everything mapped. And how this works is this is being mapped. Here, we'll just break it down for you. So positive Z. If you, oh, positive X. Helps if I can read. All right, so right here, positive X. That's anything coming this way. So this face is on the positive X. And that's the only place it is. We'll say you want it um, on right here. That would probably be the negative Y. There we go. So now it's hitting negative Y. Because if you look at it this way, anything going this way is positive, positive, and then positive. And then if it's hitting it from the back, that would be negative Y, because that's opposite of this, negative X, and then negative Z. So let's plug all of these, all of these back in. But let's leave out the positive Z. So now there's nothing on top, and you have this nice smudgy texture all around it. So normally in Blender you would do, you can do this in Blender. I found kind of a complicated way with math and separating X, Y, Z. Um, it just, it takes too much time. So this is another reason why I love Octane. You can do so much with so little nodes. And uh, say I want another texture on top of here. Well, instead of doing something to make a mask with two materials and mix RGBs or mix material, or going in here and grabbing the top and setting that as a separate UV map. And I don't have any UV maps in this, by the way. Like, we set it up together. We didn't do any of that stuff. Um, so, let's duplicate this. And then I'm going to grab a different texture. I'm going to grab this hand. Because when I tested it, it was cool. I'm going to grab this hand. Oh, we can set this to non-color because it's going into the roughness. And I always stop it and start it. All right, so uh, let's start it back up. There it is. And let's uh, take this hand and say I want this handprint to be up here. Well, if we think about it, we want a handprint to be up here. That's positive Z. All right. Go up here, projection. All right, so now we have a really big handprint up here. So when it comes to scaling these maps, um, I just drop in a full transform pretty much every time. There's only like two instances, instances I've seen with IES lights and projection lighting, which we're going to go over that here shortly. I'm hopefully going to have a video out this week on IES lights and how to do like a movie projector style light. All right, see this handprint? I'm going to highlight all these by dragging down, then I can drag left and right. Boom, look at that. I'm scaling it. And say you don't want it to repeat. See how I have these little fingers popping up? Non-color. Go over here and change this to black color, and that'll, that'll stop it. Or I think you can do clamp value, and that'll actually not have the, uh, the tiling effect. Yeah, we just have the one now. But I usually just do black color. So now we have one node, one material, and we essentially can have two, four, six different maps going in here. And what's super cool is now you can actually go and you can translate this across. So you can customize where you want it if you just want it somewhere on the top. 
Now say you want the hand there and you want it down here. Well, if you look up here, that would be this way. So it would be going on the negative Y. All right, well, it's a little crooked. So what I do is I just duplicate these and I put that on the negative Y. And I can zero these back out. Okay, so it's there, but it's the wrong way. So I want to rotate it, not that way. Whoop. Really? It's not rotating? Is my top one rotating? It's not. Oh, there it goes. All right, so you rotate. Why are you? Ah, there you go. So rotate it that way. Move it over. Look at that. Boom, boom. That's just a really cool effect. And then you can still go in here and mess with your gamma. And change the power of these guys. So say you want that to match, just hit 0.7 here. And now the hands have the same gamma value, same roughness value. And then the power always changes your overall. And you can come back down here and play with this one. So yeah, that is the triplanar mapping node. Uh, I love it, or triplanar texture, I guess they call it. And it's set to object space, by the way. If you set it to world space, uh, you can make weird stuff happen if you drag it around. Might be kind of a cool animation. I never mess with that. I just keep it in object space. So if you have like a, uh, oh, let's see, like a, like a can, this is where it can be super useful. You could have, let's just copy that. Let's see. You can have fingerprints and smudges and water drops all around it. But then on the top, you could have, hold on, let me map this. Let me make, make it look right. Have to add a couple supporting edge loops here. There, good enough. So then on the top, if you wanted to have um, any other texture like, I don't know, like anisotropic lines or something, you could come in and go to wherever you have your materials. Where's metal? There's metal. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's going so slow. Hopefully my audio didn't mess up. Plug that one. Oh wait, did I put that up there? Oh, I gotta scale it bigger. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. So now I have this anisotropic, anisotropic spherical style. That was fun to say. Uh, map going along the top. And you can even have that on the bottom if you just change that to negative Z2. Boom. There you go. It's on there now. So there's a lot of different possibilities you can, you can do with this. That's one of my favorites. And a lot of people are asking how you scale textures and things um, this full transform and you have different projection modes so I'm gonna get away from this uh, node here I'm pretty sure you've got the got the gist let me see oh this is something else that's kind of cool real quick super uh, super quick so if you have a camera angle and you're doing a test render and you're like well I want to pause that for a minute well there's no pause option if you go over here, you can actually go to stop the render and it'll stop it from rendering, uh, but it'll hold the image up there. So I can actually show you that everything has stopped. Doop. There we go. Now it's just chilling. Nothing's going on. Well, I'm screen recording, but other than that, loads are completely low what sucks is you can't uh 
you can't hit like play you actually have to start it up again there it goes now it's rendering again but yeah that's a uh, kind of cool whoops I don't want that get out of here what do I do W yeah W okay uh, let me show you just scaling and other uh, projections real quick okay so here I just dropped in a cube we're gonna hit play and we're gonna go up to new material and I'll just drop back in the colorful UV map image plug that in the color so you can see it and this pretty much looks like box projection um, say this is what you want but you need to scale it up or down a little bit just remember you want to fully transform it and you can start scaling it here now it doesn't scale properly if you just do that um, it can get you uh, maybe the result you're looking for but it's always good to throw some sort of projection on it so for this I'll use a box projection if I'm not going to use triplanar oops and now it'll actually scale from center out across all the planes and then if you want to move this you know on your X on your Y and your Z um, here's your X and then your Y will Z do anything no, I didn't think Z would do anything And you can always unwrap it um, if you unwrap which tab into edit mode go to U unwrap let's see drop in a UVW projection there you go now you can go into your UVs oh geez there we go UV editor alright where is one I can see there we go come here let me just grab this now you can play with the UV maps and if you have your image displayed it's a lot easier so yeah and if you have a, another UV map do, do, do go over here go to UVs add a new one um, you would just change this to UV space 2 see how that just changed UV space 1 so when I did my um, my coronavirus I had a grippy surface and then a metallic surface so I just selected out here we'll do a really terrible example because eventually we're gonna make that I just grabbed all these guys and I had those as uh, a UV map 2 so when I did a second material um, let me grab something totally different image texture let's grab materials yeah road why not that makes sense asphalt UVW projection 2 projection now really it's the road under here it's the asphalt so I made this my bumpy texture and then I made this my smooth texture yeah it's a nice kind of easy way to uh, play with mixing materials if the triplanar mix doesn't work triplanar pick uh, triplanar mix would have not worked for me for that because I needed so many different things on one object um, if I just wanted to have a couple different image textures like uh, or roughness textures like 
fingerprints on over here and then kind of that crazy metallic finish on the top that would have been perfectly fine but when i need to do specific looks on specific areas i usually uv map and then again if you want to scale i think you can do a uvw transform oh nah let's not do that one um you can just do a full transform And you can scale again. Oh, that's tiny. Then you can move it around. So um, I'm going to show you guys one more thing today. And this was something I was playing with the other day. Um, I showed how to do, if it ever does this, stop it. And then go again. Ah, I think I deleted my camera. Camera. Boom. There. There. If you ever delete your camera, sometimes your scene will go all black or your, your parts will go invisible. So yeah, don't delete your camera. Okay, so one thing I was playing with was I was messing around and I had a displacement map. And I always just hit Shift A and S and type in what I want. I never actually go and search through Shift A. All right, so plug that into Displacement. Um, I'm gonna grab an image texture, and we will grab a road one. Yeah, asphalt height. Cool, works for me. None. All right, so we'll set this to like 4K, set that to one, and boom, that is a road that I would want to drive down. No, I wouldn't. All right, so point one, perfect. And I was messing around with um, the noise texture, and I think I had some sort of glossy thing going on. Um, one it's crazy I had a noise texture in my roughness I forget what I was doing with it yeah I was playing with that and I was thinking well hey this is just a black and white image why can't let's see why can't I use the black and white value in the displacement texture so if you had a gradient, you can actually see it's black and white stuff, right? Well, if I put this back to like 1.2, there. That's a better visual. So black and white. So I was kind of excited. I was like, oh yeah, I can do that in here. I've done that in the cinema before. Boom. Nope. No boom. Doesn't work. I double checked. Well, this is black and white, and it's not even as contrasty as this. So, why is it not working? So, through playing with random things, um, I cannot remember where I saw this, but there was one video I watched a while ago where um, they were trying to combine displacement maps, and for some reason, Cinema wouldn't combine both of them, it only used one. And they had to throw that into a bake texture. So I was like, all right, well, I'll try it. Let me throw that into the texture. I left all this the same. And then put that into here. And that surely will not work. Oh, it worked. Isn't that cool? So now, look at that. It's like a, like a space terrain. You could rough it up. I mean, don't like beat it up, but just make it rough. How cool is that? And you can play around with your height power. And then the contrast is what gives you these peaks. So you could pretty much almost make that into an ocean. And it would actually have real displacement because this is actually displacing this plane. And I just thought of that now with the ocean thing. Um, if you put in a full transform, 
let's try this. Uh, transform. If you would animate it probably on the X. Oh, it's too slow hmm, to actually visualize it. And this is slow. Like this is slow on my computer. My computer is not really a slouch. But yeah, check this out. You could map it across this way. Maybe animate this a little bit and you might get some like ripply style actual displacement. I don't know, I'll have to try that. I'll have to actually do it and do an animation of it. Uh, let's make it blue. That's cool. The water is shiny. Yeah, neat. But anyways, you can actually go in and change your noise and have this affect your ground plane if you wanted some sort of cool environment or you could go super tiny with the scale of it. And just make some weird, crazy, abstract, abstract stuff. I can't talk today. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can play around with all your values and kind of get it how you want it. So back to one, see what that looks like. Yeah, cool. So there's kind of like a nice terrain for you. So yeah, I thought I would show you that. Kind of neat. Um... I think that's really all I wanted to cover in this one. Uh, we're going to go over, I'm going to try to put out another video here in a couple days of a kind of a cool laser scan effect um, and a lighting projection tutorial. So you can make it look like a movie theater or um, there's a tutorial by, oh, I can't remember who it is, CG... CG shortcuts where he he makes it look like um, there's a window uh, what is it? a window shining onto a wall like moonlight coming in a room but you can see the window frame outline and it's kind of different to do it in here and I was playing around with it because it's one of my favorite tutorials and it's from kind of back in the day um, but I actually figured out how to get it going in here but I'm trying to figure out the best way to optimize it and explain it um, so I'll probably tie that into my my lighting and then in the same lighting pro, uh, the projection lighting tutorial we do I'm gonna go over how to add volume like fog because um, that's kind of cool so yeah hopefully this helped you guys with some basic texture projection and mapping and then hopefully you learn something new with the uh, triplanar projection node so if you could please subscribe it'd be awesome if you guys subscribe so I know people are actually liking these um, I think it's like, I don't know, 85% of people are not subscribed. So if you could subscribe, that'd be super cool. That way maybe more people could see it and learn something because this is amazing and it's free. And I'm actually using the free version right now. Um, I made a separate account. That way, everything I do, I know that you guys can actually do. It doesn't have to be some weird paid version. Um, I just, I wish we could get, uh, I wish we were allowed to do two GPUs. That'd be awesome. But yeah, anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you guys soon.